two lines are fuel lines. So they are both coming from the gas tank and uh, the upper one here is the supply line. So if you follow the supply line we can see that it's going all the way to the high pressure pump. This is the high pressure pump. Uh, the electrical connector and from the high pressure pump the fuel is pumped to the common rail. So this is the actual rail. You can see the it's like a, a long cylinder uh, and the pressure inside this one is extremely high. Um, from the rail the fuel is supplied to each injector. So you see the lines going to injector 1, injector 2, 3 and 4. So this is actually cylinder number 1, 2, 3 and 4. So the extra fuel that's not um, injected into the cylinder is uh, sent into this return line and if we follow the return line you can see that all the uh, cylinders has connections to the return line. It's going all the way back to the gas tank. Uh, this one is the, I believe it's the fuel temperature sender, so you can see that it's connected to the ECU. And um, we also have a uh, pressure sender inside here. So, so this one uh, monitors the pressure inside the rail. And you also have um, a valve. This is the connection to the valve. Uh, and this fuel pressure regulating valve uh, can open up and let go of some fuel if the pressure inside here gets too high. If you see here that's uh, the glow plug for cylinder number one, glow plug two, glow plug three, glow plug four. And um, inside here are it's just a wiring harness, but don't get confused because this one on the top is actually a, f uh, a vacuum line. You can see that the vacuum line is coming from the vacuum pump. So this vacuum pump it's only a vacuum pump i remember on my last car it was it was a combined fuel and vacuum pump but this is only vacuum pump so you can see if you follow the vacuum line it connects to uh, that one over here Try to show you this and this one, uh, and we can't see them ex exactly because it's a cover on top of them. But it's the N75 valve which regulates the um, turbo, and I believe the other valve is uh, the solenoid valve for the EGR cooler. All right. Under here, the air is sucked in through here um, and through here. The air passes through the air filter, which is inside this box. Um, the air is filtered inside the filter and sent through the mass airflow sensor. The sensor sits inside of this round thing and it's connected here. Um, this hose meets the turbo down there. You can see that silvery thing, that's the turbo. The inlet side of the turbo. And um, you can also see that uh, this line, that's the PCV valve or the crankcase ventilation. So the crankcase is vented and the fumes and gases from the crankcase is sent down here and into the 
intake right before the turbo. You get a better view of the turbo here. And you can see the that line there. That's the oil line that supplies the turbo with oil. And you can see behind the turbo that big thing over there. That's the catalytic converter and the diesel particulate filter. So those two are combined inside that big thing. And um, the connection here, that's the lambda sensor. No, forgive me, that's the exhaust pressure sender. And we have another connection a little bit under here, which is the exhaust gas temperature sender. So this is the lambda sensor. And we also have another lambda sensor uh, on the back of the catalytic converter. Uh, you can see this is the electrical connector to the lambda sensor and this is for the exhaust gas pressure sender. And below here is the exhaust manifold. You can see that the exhaust manifold is connected to the EGR cooler. So warm exhaust is sent into this EGR cooler. You can see this is a coolant line. So this one supplies coolant to the cooler. And this is the return line for coolant. Um, and the exhaust is conditioned inside of this and sent through a pipe which comes inside here and goes into the EGR valve. So we're going to talk about that later, but let's see over here. Um, you see that the um, EGR cooler is actuated by vacuum. This is a vacuum hose. And the solenoid valve, I believe, is down there beside the N75 valve. And um, you can also see that the turbo has a electrical connector and as well a vacuum hose connected to it. So the, um, this is actually a VNT turbo, variable nozzle turbo or turbine. So it's not controlled by a wastegate, which my previous car was. Okay, so if we follow the air through the air intake duct and past the mass airflow sensor down where it meets the turbo and from the turbo sent to the intercooler and the intercooler is actually front mounted on this car. So maybe we can spot it somewhere here. Uh, it's actually hard to see it but in there is the intercooler and the intercooler uh, sends the air to this box and that's the resonator and over here we have the the map sensor manifold air pressure sensor the air is sent through this hose and the first thing it meets here is the intake manifold flap. You can see it's connected to this one and you have a motor inside of here and um, this one cooperates with the EGR valve. Uh, it's also called the anti-shutter valve so it helps the car to shut down when you turn off the key, so it prevents it from dieseling. And this is the EGR valve. You can see the connection is coming from the EGR cooler. And the 
electrical connector here, under here. This is the intake manifold. And um, on the side here, you can see we have the, because it's a, a variable intake. And uh, inside the intake, there are small swirl flaps. And these flaps are regulated by this intake manifold flap motor. This is the connector to the flap motor. I forgot to mention, but this is the pump for the exhaust gas, your circulation cooler. And um, inside here is the engine oil filter. Over here is the service connection to your air conditioning system. You can see the line here is going all the way to the condenser, which is in front of the radiator. So the condenser is the one you can see inside here. And the radiator, oh, it's hard to see. It's behind those fans. Inside this box is the anti-lock braking system control unit. And um, if you see here, there are three, four lines going to all four wheels. And these two lines are going to your master cylinder and brake servo. And this is the reservoir for brake fluid. This is for washer fluid. This box is for power steering fluid. And you can see below here is the hose for power steering fluid which connects to the power steering pump down there. This is the power steering pump. And you can see that the pump is driven by the serpentine belt or the pulley belt. It's driven by the belt along with the air conditioner compressor, air conditioning compressor which sits below the power steering pump. So it's below there. It's hard to see. That's the alternator, also driven by the pulley belt. Uh, that's the tensioner in the middle. And that big one over there, that's the crankshaft pulley. If we open up this cover, we can see the timing belt. So let's do that. If I'm able to. Yes. And that is the timing belt. So this is the camshaft pulley. And this is the pulley for the high pressure pump. So the fuel pump is driven by the, the camshaft. And it also has the water pump down there. And a tensioner an idler pulley. Oh. It looks okay. <laughs>